With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. John! What? Red 7! I don't know what Red 7 means. Hot route! I don't. What is hot route? Will you just go stand on the other side, please? Down! what we call a sack lunch. Nom, 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 nom. It's time for the Soonerscoop.com postgame show presented by Eskridge Lexus in Oklahoma City. Eskridge Lexus is the official travel partner of Soonerscoop.com podcasts. Now, here's your road crew, Kerry, Eddie, and Bob, wrapping up all the action and reaction from this week's game. Podcast right here on Soonerscoop.com podcast. Uh, Eddie is along with alongside as is uh, George Stoya, and uh, that's just an, an, another intro that I'll have to fix. Um, yeah, good luck with that, game's buddy. Over. Uh, we can uh, focus on that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, look, I don't even. I think I know what the score was. I think it was sixty-five fifty-eight. It doesn't really matter. Correct. Chapman, Chapman McCown. Chapman McCown with 18-yard run around the edge? Who knows? Who cares? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, Chapman McCown. The, the family McCown family. This is a banner yeah. day for Chapman and uh, in Crimson and Korea. He got some... Uh, he got some... Even got a post-game press conference We heard invite. from Chapman McCown before we heard from the defensive coordinator. That's actually a fact. And you're not bitter at all, are you? By the way, announced crowd of 45,861... What do you think it really was? I mean, I don't know if I believe forty five thousand, but if well, you wanted to, bought tickets. If, if you wanted to tell me thirty five thousand, I would have said, yeah, yeah that that sounds about. It wasn't right. a terrible crowd. Here's and the thing: for a and, day that they didn't think the weather was yeah. going to be very good, it ended up being really, really. It was kind of football weather. Yeah, like yeah. it was kind of nice. I'll say this: I think that that was one of the best scrimmages, red and white games that I've ever witnessed. Like you saw, really big plays. You saw, you know, a little bit of the. I mean, it was. Pretty clear. Jackson Arnold was playing against the twos most of the po- most of the time. Uh, Michael Huck- Hawkins had it a little bit rougher, uh, but we saw a clear QB one emerge today in the scrimmage. I thought, and, and you know, the, you go it, look. He plays the Alabama Bowl. He throws all the interceptions, but he does throw for a lot of yardage. I thought today he looked in command. I think you know, hitting the deep balls early to to Dion Burks really settled him down, settled him into the game. Uh, and I, you know, he made some plays with his feet when he had to, but overall, he just he looked as composed as I've seen him in well, a scrimmage situation every, or everybody, a live situation. Everybody will look at the 64 yarder uh, to Deion Burks to open the game, basically. But you'll also forget that he had the 10 yard run right Third before and nine, that play and he picked it up, to yeah, pick up the feet. first down. Right, and it's hard to pick up nine yards when you don't have to get tackled when you have to get touched. So sure. It's not easy, and and I thought Michael Hawkins looked good, you know, moving around, but he didn't have nearly as much time to throw the no. ball, uh, and I think a lot of that was Grayson Halton played really well, uh, P.J. Adeboraway played really well. Um, Devon and, Sears had Devon a good Sears day. Devon Sears had a sack uh, along R. with Mason that. Thomas had R. Mason one. Thomas had a good day. And yeah. I mean, no surprise, but like Ethan, Ethan Downs did some really nice stuff early. Yeah. David, David Stone had a sack too, by the way. He did have a sack, didn't he? Yep. Uh, but anyway, Jackson Arnold on the day, 10 of 20, 233 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, uh, which you didn't have uh, Woody Washington playing in this game. You didn't have Billy Bowman playing in this game. Obviously, you didn't have Gentry Williams playing in this game. Uh, who am I forgetting in the secondary? On the defense, just in the defensive, defensive side? Defensive general, yeah. Uh, I think that that's did it. Did Wagner play a whole lot today? I did not see Josiah he had a He had a club on his hand. Yeah, he didn't have the club on today, but I saw his hand was... was Taped a little bit differently. I don't Jacoby know. Kobe Johnson got a lot of snaps today. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, McCarty we'll, Vickers. We'll get into it, but I thought that Michael Boganowski and oh, Jaden Hardy yes. both flashed, they yeah, flashed and looked the part. Now, I think that it's also a good thing that you're talking about some of these defensive guys and, you know, in kind of in wake of the news that you reported on Friday with Justin Harrington, George, uh, I think it's pretty apparent that they not just like, they love 
Lewis Carter as well as Samuel Masigo. Yes, uh, I think that both those guys are going to find their way onto the field. I mean, Lewis Carter started today at Will Linebacker next to Danny Stutzman. And, you know, the defense, they did some, like, it was funny, Des Malone and Kanai Walker were on the second team, and the rest of the team was the second team, but then the first team had Makari Vickers and Jacoby Johnson. I don't know. I think they kind of rotated the first team and second team defense a little bit, but um, I thought that uh, Lewis Carter being out there as much as he was was interesting, and then Samuel Masigo playing a ton of cheetah. Samuel Masigo was the backup cheetah today behind Dolby. So, uh, you know, I think that he's going to play quite a bit. Well, and let's hit on one thing, you know, that we talked about so much during camp, and that's the offensive line. Yep. Um, they ran the ball really well today, regardless if it was first team, second team. Uh, you did see some, you know, some flashes from Caleb Hicks. I mean, he led all rushers 10, 10 carries, uh, 62 yards. The touchdown had run Had a 6.2 fantastic. average, 30-yard touchdown run. Was we really might need to... Uh, I, that was a fourth and short, and yeah, it just broke, just broke it over. Do we want to get into offensive line or Javante Barnes first? Well, we can let's hit, hit Barnes because I think the running back position, just the fact that Sam Franklin did some good things today. I mean, yeah. everybody that was out there, and uh, I always forget his name, the walk on, the Mecca, um, Megwa. 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 Uh, he didn't get a lot of snaps today. Uh, they gave a lot more to, you know, Gavin Sawchuk looked great in the beginning, and then they took him out and let. Let uh, Caleb Hicks and and uh, Sam Franklin carry a lot of the load, uh, and you saw Xavier Robinson come in late. But the one guy you didn't see today was Javante Barnes. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to sixty percent on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin, or Becky's bachelorette bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. And I honestly do not know why. I mean, Brent was asked about it post game and gave this just weird answer saying that he was somebody that they felt like they didn't need to play him today because they were going to let other guys get some reps. But that makes no sense if you're going to play Gavin Sawchuk as much as you did. Uh, I mean, if if you know what you have in any of the guys, it's Gavin Sawchuk. So I don't understand why you wouldn't play Javante Barnes. Is there a possibility that... He just can't. DeMarco Murray just doesn't think he has it. I really don't know. I think there's a chance I, I, I he don't goes know. in the portal. I mean, Eddie was just showing me a video of him talking to DeMarco Murray, and it didn't look like. I kept like eyes on him the entire it wasn't second, like a, third quarter because I, I just was like, where's he at? What's it wasn't he like doing? an angry conversation, but no. it was a. Uh, it was like he walked up to him and asked a question and clearly didn't understand the answer. This guy's either going to be like the best running back that we just have not seen in a year and a half, or he will end up going into the portal, it feels like. It's like, it's one of the two. I don't see him coming back and going through this whole charade next season again. But, I mean, if he was capable and physically able to play today, he didn't and touch you the didn't field. play him... He didn't touch the field. To me, yeah. that says we're trying to convince him to enter the portal it's just it's it's bizarre and and everything it's even more bizarre now than it was coming off of all the stuff that Javante had talked about uh during the the regular season or uh, during the first Either part he's of spring. lying or he's kept up a brave face through this whole thing and because I, he does not seem to be George you way he doesn't seem to be disgruntled mm -mm. no I don't think so and what's crazy guys is like I know he's been practicing yeah. And he's been in the and scrimmages. He's been good in scrimmages. Just, like he scored touchdowns in scrimmages this year, like in the like literally a week ago. So I don't Are they afraid to let people see him? I don't know. I mean like I don't know. I it, there's something going on and because I just think Brent's answer was such a like bullshit answer, to be completely blunt, because if you're saying, oh, we want to see other guys, we want some other guys to get some opportunity, then why the hell's Gavin Sawchuck playing? Can I because, throw out a just a, a, a conspiracy theory? Brent doesn't want us talking to assistants because they are managing the portal with players and they don't want a player to come out and say, I don't understand why I'm being treated this way. When maybe they're being nudged and processed. He's afraid what? like that's going to come to light. This is just a hypothesis. I mean, it's just a yeah. theory. What do you mean though? Like, like, how's that having anything to do with not talking to assistants? Like, if because if we talk to DeMarco and ask him, 
you know, how's Javante doing oh, or this yeah. or that? But wouldn't he just, couldn't he just lie? Are we, are we, are we, are we you know, talk to Zach Alley and we say, you know, why did Jaron Connect bust on that, you know, touchdown? Oh, which, the, by the, the way, it's today. just a funny moment today. Dusty. Hot I mic. hate talking about that because I mean, like I, I know how that is, and it's not fair I mean, to he, him. What he said was obviously yeah, it wasn't right. wrong. No. I mean, he was caught on a hot. Toby tried to throw it to break. They didn't take it to break. He was just being honest about what he saw. Which I don't even think it was that bad of a comment. To which be Jaron Kanak blew coverage on a play and let a guy run wide open behind the the secondary and scored a touchdown, fifty yard touchdown. And then he just said, "I don't know if he can play here." Which Kip Lewis, Lewis Carter? I mean, just go down the list. I mean, Kobe McKenzie, Danny Stutzman. Kobe McKenzie, I mean, uh, Danny all those Stutzman, guys. Like it, it, it he, does. I mean, look, make Owen Heineke. It, it high, Owen Heineke played really well today. Is he your new pride of Bishop Kelly, baby? Is he? He's your new Connor Near. Yeah, he's my new Connor. He's Neer. way better than Connor Near ever thought. He of is. Him. Anyway, but like, the truth is, Jared Kanek, Kanek has fallen behind other people. I mean, Kip Lewis was fantastic in Bedlam last year. Yeah. He has instincts. He knows how to play the position. And uh, he played, you know, at Carthage, you know, played in the state championship. He played a lot of big-time football. Jaron Canick's from Kansas. I, I would also say Desan McCullough's kind of passed him up. I thought Desan McCullough looked pretty good at Will Linebacker today. He made some nice plays in the run game. I mean, they have depth, and I think that that was one of the biggest question marks that I was – I had just not no not specifically with the linebacker position, but I thought that there was a number of guys at cornerback that we talked about on the instant reaction, George, that all played well today. I thought Kadai Walker had a really nice day. Jacoby Johnson played a lot. Uh, like we said, Macari Vickers played a lot today. It just seems like that. Is that Jaden Hardy a little, was in there with with the Kanai on that one long touchdown to Burks? I think was it were those two in yeah. there? I, I don't remember. I thought that they showed out though at least at the quarterback position that offers you an idea that it's going to be a little bit, maybe it's, it is real. It's when not you something still have just talking about Gentry and you still have yeah. Woody that can come in and yeah, we know they, they, they can, can play, play today. Yeah. And I thought that I thought the uh, maybe surprising, I don't know about surprising, but I thought the defensive line was better than I anticipated. Like great. Yeah. Seeing that from Grayson Halton today, yeah. Devon Sears, who's a guy that we've heard a lot about, but we just haven't seen a play like seeing those two guys, especially kind of step up. Like that makes you gives you a little bit more confidence. I still and think, then you've got David Stone that you know wasn't did yeah. flash a lot today, but you know he has the talent. Same with Jaden Jackson. Jackson. He flashed a little I thought, bit. Today. I thought Jaden Jackson was around the ball a lot. Yeah. Yes, and it, he probably didn't have an overall effect on the play, but he was there. Right. But again, I think look, I think the interior offensive line is fine. I mean, Heath Ozeda, There was one play where they double teamed David Stone. I think it was a Gavin Sawchuck run. Uh, poor David Stone. That was the first time he'd been double teamed by two massive human beings, and they drove him at least fifteen yards into the into the secondary. Take up two blockers, and I thought the offense. But he was line. playing. I mean, he's playing inside. I don't. Yeah. I don't see him playing there. Why is he playing like a one? And he's know? he's of like we've talked about this six man rotation, and let's say they land a couple guys in in the transfer portal. David Stone's like the fifth guy in that rotation probably like he's like the fifth or sixth guy yeah. because he's just not look his the potential's there but like he's just not he's the guy you to love to bring in on third down yes. and play him on the edge yep and let him let him loose but i thought the offensive and line of stunts and games with him on the inside yeah i think flipping to the other side the offensive line was i thought surprisingly good uh and, and i mean i'm gonna say it's shockingly good yeah I, from I what just, we've been hearing it, it's one of those things it's it's great to see but my question is is that because of the people they were playing against now a lot of people were out it, it, the opposite side of that is it's good that they were making plays i thought grayson holt was well, hot was awesome and today. dejon terry didn't really play much and, today. well he didn't play he didn't even i suit think he out. was in at the end he didn't suit no out. he didn't oh suit he, out. that wasn't yeah. him okay um but you know i thought the offensive line was Especially in that first quarter, I mean, Jackson Arnold had all day to throw. Yeah, um, you know, I thought, I thought uh, Bates played pretty good. He, th there was a couple high snaps. Um, Did you see Bates go after Michael Boganowski that one? Yes, time? when he hit, uh, <laughs> was it Burks? That it he was. Hit? It was or Sharp. It was before the Sharp hit. It was the uh, first one, and I can't. I, I don't think it was Burks. It might have been like Jaden Gibson or something. Yeah, I can't remember, but I know what you're talking about. But. Uh, I thought Jacob Sexton looked really good at left guard. Uh, Michael Tark, Michael Tarquin. We are not talking enough about Michael Tarquin. I, 
I really did not think he was going to be a big... I, I guess I thought he was maybe going to contribute, but not start. And sure. definitely not play at the level that he's been... I mean, he's he's probably going to start at left tackle, which I would not have guessed. Incredible. Yeah. Again, though, is that a product of them not having anybody else? Or has he done so well that he's won that job? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, he played well today. Yeah. Um, you know, I still think right tackle, Jake Taylor is a little inconsistent. Spencer Brown got beat a couple times today. He was mostly in with the second unit. Um, we I, we was their best offensive lineman, though, I think. Yeah. Um, can I give a suggestion for the uh, new special teams coach? Yes. Find a way to use general booty on special teams and do some trick plays to him because he is fast. How about he, opened it up a little bit? He is that fast. Was awesome. I I my recommendation is go get another kicker. I I think they're fine. In fact, I think Zach Schmidt's going to win the job, and I think he's going to be good. He looked better today. I and, I mean there weren't a whole lot, of and and that's the yeah. thing that sucks is because we've talked about how good the kickers have been, and I like they they were they've been really good when we've seen them. I've heard yeah. reports that they've been really good. But then you run uh, Tyler Keltner out there for a uh, field goal of consequence, and he misses it. And it was kind of four yards. It was like the most goal. deflating yeah. portion of the game today. Was it like, wasn't really that close? Damn it. Was it not? I couldn't tell. I was, was right below it. It was five, six footballs outside of the goal. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. I I don't know. I the thing with the the kicker is is if you have a guy that's entering the portal, uh, the Arkansas State kid, for instance, the Lou Groves a winner. I'm sure he's going to want a scholarship, and they're not going to do that. By the way, did Joe John Finley kick a 40-yard field goal before the— No, they were kicking punts at halftime. No, I mean, b- before the game, or was it halftime that they were doing They were that? doing punting at halftime. Well, they said on the broadcast that he just went 40 yards. Yeah, it was a punt. Him uh-huh. and Zach Alley were That's punting. I said, kick a punt. For like, you said field goal. But either way, yeah. I'm throwing out the challenge flag. Yeah, I mean, what I What do you say, George? What? What were you going to say? He said field goal or punt. I wasn't listening. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Either way, yeah, they were kicking punts for like three points, which, you know, I the the whole scoring thing is just stupid. I don't even yeah, pay attention to it. Yeah, I didn't pay it. attention. I didn't care. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, what did you guys think about uh, no tight ends really today? Yeah. I didn't really get involved. I mean, I think that that's, that's just part of the all... of them not wanting to throw a whole lot out I just, there. Yeah, I was just exactly. like, well, shit, we talked to Bauer Sharp and he just yeah. got well, his shit all... rocked by Michael Poganowski today. <laughs> we all got into the, like, you know, trying to figure out who was going to be the star of the game. And after everything we've heard about Bauer, Bauer Sharp, I think we all kind of thought like, oh, he might, he might be that guy. I thought he might catch a couple touchdowns or something. Like they get into the red zone, they just target a guy. You know what? There's so much mystery around what Seth is going to do. Like even the other day when uh, someone referred to an H back, like mm-hmm. Jackson did Jackson referred to an H back. Like no one really knows Mm-mm. at Oklahoma, what Seth is going to be like. They know what he was like at North Texas. They know what, you know, they did at Arizona, but you've got a different, you know, skill set of players at Oklahoma that you can mess around with. And we still don't. I, th- I think that that, I don't know if it's a frustrating thing, but I, we still don't know exactly what this offense is going no. to look like. We saw it today in a limited version, but I, you know, you still would think that if they get into a situation where they need to go get six yards, I would love to see what that play is. Yeah. I will say, I, I think that it's, I don't know about clear, but I would pump the brakes on Devon Mitchell having a huge role on this team. Next uh, he's year. not ready. I think he's, he's a year not away. Not ready. Yeah. In fact, I don't think it would have been the worst thing for him to have another year in high school. He's just not developed enough well, as a I guess as an it, athlete. Like he's going to spend time with Schmitty, and he's going to work on his agility and things like that. But he's just he's a baby, man. I mean, he's just not there yet. And he could make a huge stride in a year. But expecting him to make an impact, I don't see it. This Not year. right now. But I also think that maybe that's going to be a product of uh, what they already have at tight end. If Bauer Sharp's the guy that everybody has talked about, if you know Jake Roberts can get back and healthy, and nobody really Helms. even knows about him. It seems like at this point he hasn't been able to yeah. practice any. Caden yeah. Helms is another guy that Caden McIntyre was running today. with the second team. Caden McIntyre. I just it it's going to be a really interesting position because I think everybody feels pretty confident about it coming out as a group out of the spring. But at the same time, they don't necessarily, in my opinion right now, have somebody that's going to be a 
you know, second or third team all no. all SEC type guy. Let me throw this out there at you um, because I think I know I've just kind of written him off. Then he had the one handed grab in, in practice that we saw one day, but JJ Hester got quite a few targets. He started. He, he looks the part too. Yeah. I would say like he's not a skinny kid. No. He's pretty well put together. Well, you guys knew him from high school, right? Yeah, he was recruitment. extremely skinny in high school. I mean, he he's an interesting one because you'd like to think that he could maybe get in there and get some reps, but like Nick Anderson's going to be back. Jalil Farouk's going to be back. You know, you would you By the way, they tried Andrell to... is going to be back. Oh, but when Andrell's back and healthy, like, ugh. They've got some speed, man. Brennan Thompson didn't play today. Yeah. They've got some serious speed. So I, JJ's JJ, I think he's had a really good spring, but you wonder, is he a portal candidate just in the sense that like, I just don't know how he's going to get in over I don't, think that, I don't think that's or, crazy. Yeah. Here's the other thing. I, thought I still was, think I still think they're going to have like two or three guys in her, the portal. What I thought was interesting is it felt like they were trying to, you know, force some things to Jaquez Petaway. They like try and get him going. They had that reverse early. Uh, it was more of a misdirection, you know, jet sweep where they, they faked the handoff to the running back, hit him behind the quarterback and, uh, Ethan Downs chased him down on the outside. They tried to throw to him a few times. Sometimes it was behind him. But it just, you know, we heard, we've kind of been talking about, we've heard some things about him, you know, following coaches from other schools and things like that on Twitter. Uh, and we've all checked into it and everybody's like, no, we don't, we don't, we're not worried about Jaquez. But I don't know, does he get out of the spring and start looking at it and saying, Look at look at Dion Burks. I mean, he. I just, mean, there's a lot more opportunity for Petaway inside than there is maybe for Hester outside. Would that be fair? Especially when you're look, when you're thinking Jake yes, Gibson, yes. Nick Anderson didn't even really participate much of the spring. I just well, from what we saw today, Dion Burks needs to be on the outside. He's not. He's uh, not no. gonna play the Drake Stoops. No, role. no, no, no. I no, mean, no, I think no, he no, is. No. He's gonna play in the slot. He is. He is. But he's going to be a deep guy in yeah, the slot. Yeah, but Petaway would be more of a. They'll run different routes yeah. with him than they did with Stoops. But he's playing in the slot. He's too. He is too shifty and agile to have when him. you saw some of that they threw him some yeah. out routes and you could put him on the line. outside maybe you do some five wide stuff or something but like he he is built for the slot that dude i was telling eddie he reminds me a lot of hollywood but he is he's stronger oh, than yeah. hollywood, hollywood much was more a, i was almost more excited about burke's catch where he took the bubble screen and made about 15 17 mm -hmm. yards yeah. Than I was even the two long bombs, the sixty four and the fifty yarder. He's man. He they got. I mean, he's got a chance to be really special next year. I think because it's, it's. I think Jackson Arnold. I mean, I saw that J D. Pakel had been was started tweeting out immediately, but he was the first one that brought it up, and I hadn't even thought of it. Like, what if you have a, a Dion Burks and a healthy, you know, Andrew Anthony next year? Like, what a combination that's going to be. Or even Brennan Thompson. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about having. Two, the two fastest guys on the field at one time. The people have to double one. And you can't, yeah, you got to You can't bracket open. both those guys. Yeah. And if you do, then you're leaving someone else. So they've, they, I mean, man, they've got some players at receiver. That's why we keep going back to the offensive line. line. They just have to be adequate enough to give Jackson. Because we saw, time. we saw it today when they gave him time today, they made some big plays down yeah. the field. Hundred percent. Because Jackson, Jackson's got the skills to, to 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 deliver it down the field on the money. I thought the the opening play he threw a perfect ball to Gibson. I don't I, I think Gibson may have lost it in the Yeah, that hit kind of at his feet. Yeah. Kind like, of like Gibson could have dove for that. Him. And the he other didn't the one adjust that, well in the air. The one that he um uh, overthrew Burks later in the game. Burks said oh, after that was so close. He said he should have just dove for it. He's like I could have caught that if I just dove for it. But he was just barely off. I mean, that was that was really you know, the one throw he made downfield that was, I mean, it was almost there, but it just, I mean, he just had a really good day today. I also think they've got some running backs. Like, I, I think Caleb Caleb Hicks might be their best back. Most talented, I guess. I think Sawchuck is still their best back because he sees the field. I, I think that he's he's a really solid back, but I loved what I saw from Caleb Hicks today. I was impressed with uh, Caleb Hicks. I was impressed with, I thought Samuel so, Franklin yep. had a pretty nice day, all things considered. There was nothing flashy about it. But he had a, a uh, he had a couple really yeah. solid inside the tackle runs. He also had some good uh, pass pro situations. He picked up some blitzes on some pass pro, which I know Demarco is big on. Uh, by the way, I want to mention this is the Eskridge Lexus Post Game Podcast. Uh, all the folks over at Eskridge uh, still strongly supporting uh, 
the uh, Sooner Scoop podcast, even though we've probably uh, upset some of their customers over the year with the zaniness that goes on here, uh, but I did talk to Ed this week, uh, and he wanted me to mention that the new GX 550s are coming. This is the this is the car that I want George to get for his next car. Uh, the GX 550 is coming out next week. They're even going to have a car uh, in for people to test drive. I know when I've been in there, Eddie, I know you got your car serviced lately. Uh, I think when I went to pick up a car the last time we took it, they had customers, like two or three people came in asking about this new GX. If you haven't seen it online, go check it out. Uh, but get yourself in line if you want one of these puppies. They're, they're going to be one of the hottest cars on the planet. Give them a call at uh, 405 uh, seven eight four six eight zero two. Uh, ask for Ed and uh, tell him that you're a SoonerScoop.com listener, a subscriber, a YouTuber, uh, whatever, and you will get a special deal uh, with your Eskridge Lexus. No, uh, no, no ridiculous prices over MSRP. They do start. They do have cars now on the lot. That was a problem for the while, but uh, when this GX comes in, you want to be in line for one because uh, everybody is going to want one of these. It's, it really is one of the hottest cars on the planet. But EskridgeLexus.com, go send them a note uh, there as well if that's easier for you. Uh, 700 West Memorial Road in Oklahoma City. All right. Um, you know, we didn't see, like, they didn't take time out today for, like, special teams that much. I mean, there were some kickoffs. Uh, you know, there were some punts, but... You know, everything was basically fair was, caught. Yeah, yeah, and everything was fair caught. It was interesting, The though. kickoff returners, uh, it started with Dion Burks, but then he had the long touchdown, and they put Sam Franklin in there. Uh, who was on the other side? Um, Sawchuck. Sawchuck was on the other side most of the time. Uh, and I don't know if that meant that they always had to have a... Like, is there a defensive guy, like a Billy Bowman? I mean... Is he going to be a kickoff returner? Because he was on the white team, but it was only the red team that was ever receiving kickoffs. Some of these guys, I just wouldn't put back there. Like, I, I wouldn't risk it. Like, if Deion Burks is really going to be your best offensive weapon, don't put him on kickoff mm-hmm. return. Like, put put someone else, put a young guy back there, put a pet away, something like that. But I thought it was more interesting the punt returners. It was mm-hmm. Peyton Bowen and Des Malone were the two punt returners. That's That's intriguing. Des Malone is somebody that... But again, you know, you're punting to the white team every time. So it has to be somebody on the white team. A defensive guy. Oh, that's true. I didn't think about that. Damn. I thought we were onto something. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> I I still think Peyton Bowen's in the running for that. Or yeah, Des Malone. Sure. By the way, two minutes. Uh, what would you think of that? Did feel at home? Two minute, the two minute drill? Two minute warning? If it's whatever. It's an extra time out, though. It's kind of yeah, cool. I know. I know it is. I like it for games. games. But today, I was just like, let's just yeah, get, come on. keep going. Yeah. It's like 45 seconds. What are we doing here? And, and, then, then, and then at the end of the first half, the defense just kept calling timeouts to try and get the three and out points. Yeah, because they wanted like, the points. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also, um, Jackson Arnold using the helmet today. He talked a little bit about that after, or after the scrimmage. Yeah, he said that uh, he liked it. So there you go. I don't really. I mean, I I think, and that they've is, been working with it in practice. Yeah, and, I do. Thought it was. I thought it was interesting that there was. Um, like I know we've talked about this about if they're going to slow it down and the tempo. They were fast, but they were huddling. They were today. huddling. Yeah, they were fast, but then they would huddle. Every I thought once it was all tempo. They did. They did a lot of just tempo. from like shooting. Like but I it wasn't. To get... It wasn't Jeff Levy tempo. No. Oh God. No. no nobody I mean, is was, Jeff Levy tempo. It was. They definitely are slower, and there were several several possessions where they were deliberately huddling which i they never did last year be so, nice if we could have talked to seth latrell about that right yeah, we'll never talk to anybody ever again <laughs> <laughs> that's a coach um the other thing i think uh, i had it on my mind and i totally blanked on. by the way um i'm wondering like we didn't did stutzman talk about him having a helmet no thing today. Well, Brent was on the damn field like he always is, like just yeah. standing right behind the center, basically. I don't think he was calling the defense though. I think it was. I was watching it. It's pretty, pretty much just Alley calling the defense. I think. And I guess today. offensive defense were still signaling things in, even yes. with the helmets. Yeah, I know. Jackson the, the said I wasn't even paying was. attention to the signals. Yeah. D- the defense definitely was. So, um, by the way. Uh, we mentioned Michael Boganowski. He actually led the defense in tackles today. Led him in probably personal fouls, too. Um, but outside of that, any other freshmen on either side that you were just kind of like, I want to see more of him. I, I like that We didn't bit. see a whole lot of, like, Nigel Smith. Or, no. You know, Danny Okoye. Um, I think those guys are 
uh, again, they, you really like what they got at defensive end, man. They've got some, they've got some dudes there. So I, I don't know how much they're going to get to play next year. But I know Josh was, you know, bragging on Robert Spears Jennings, but I, I kind of picked him to be my standout on defense today. And you know, he had a couple of tackles, but I'm sure he's another one of those guys. There's no trying turnovers. To take it easy on him. No yeah. turnovers today. And not even really close. I mean, there was the one play that got tipped at tipped the line there. of scrimmage, yeah. and I think Jaden Gibson dove and caught mm-hmm. it and took it away from Can I Walker, maybe? Yeah, I think that's right. But in terms of freshmen, um, you know, the offensive linemen we didn't see. I mean, they were out there, but there wasn't anything that really stood out. A wide receiver, I really thought we'd see more of like Ivan Carrion mm-hmm. do some stuff. He didn't do a whole lot today. Um, Zion Kearney, um, you know, we got to see some Xavier Robinson in the late part of the game, but I think the the yeah, freshman that the true freshman that could end up playing next year, I think it's Jaden Hardy. I think he's got a chance. I think Mo- Michael Boganowski's probably got a chance. I thought he was I think impressive he's today. Too small. He needs to get bigger. I don't know. He hit the shit out of some people today, but they weren't expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I do think I think Jaden Hardy's the one guy that I would circle of the true freshman that could maybe like I could see them finding like some sort of role in that secondary for him. I don't know where and it probably wouldn't be a huge role, but it's just going to be so hard for those guys yeah. to break through because even the guys like say they were to play, that means that some of these guys that didn't play today aren't playing like a Billy Bowman or a Woody Washington right. or Gentry Williams. But to say that they're ready to play and they're ready for that moment uh, that would probably be accurate. I guess the obvious ones are like Jaden Jackson. Jaden Jackson yeah. started today because yeah. of DJ Terryberry now. I, mean, I thought Jaden Jackson held up really well inside today. He's going to play a lot. Yeah. And, but it's also important that they uh, finish off the weekend like we think that they could with getting some more help on the uh, defensive line as well as the offensive line. It does sound like those visits are going well. we'll ch- I'm going to try and check in um, tonight and maybe – tomorrow with yeah. Dominic Williams and Jermaine Lowell and then uh I think Branson Hickman it sounds like that is going very well so we could have a uh, an announcement there soon maybe from him that'd be positive we'll see about the other two by the way I know but, you didn't get an update on Andrew Anthony but uh Brent did have positive things to say about Garen Hatchett yeah he's back uh start of June I think a lot of those guys they're hoping like I think it sounds like Casey Thompson has a chance to be Kind of maybe not full go by June, but probably participating in workouts in June. Garen Hatchett too, which um, you know, seeing Garen Hatchett down on the sideline, he's he's a big enough dude. He can he could definitely help him out. I just think he's more of a a depth guy mm-hmm. than anything. Maybe he can he can play some center for you, or he's pro- he's probably that swing guard. Like if you needed a uh, an emergency guard, he'd probably come in and play there. But yeah, that's that's good news. We'll see about Andrew. I I don't know. I, it just worries me the same the same way that it worried me about uh, Justin Harrington and that you're talking about a speed guy that is coming off at an ACL injury. You just never know how that's going to go. He's already had one Will setback. he not be 100% until after this season? And, and what is even 100%? Is 100% yeah. going to be the guy that we saw a year ago that was able to create space and was a really good route runner and was basically Dylan Gabriel's go-to on third down? Or is he going to be uh, kind of back into the middle of the mix? And I think that's the one spot on offense that you can kind of afford to maybe lose a guy. Sure. And you, you've got some speed there. Um, it Obvious, just sucks. Yeah. It just sucks for Andrell because he was really, really good before he got hurt last year. Um, outside of that, anything Brent said on the podium that kind of stood out to you? No. <sighs> no. Actually, no. I mean, I, I, he did say the one line, which which just reaffirms that they are looking to add defensive linemen, which was, he, I think it was like, he's concerned with the level of experience they have mm-hmm. on the defensive line. Mm-hmm. He did say he really likes that room and the guys that have made progress there, but I do think that he's um, looking to add there. One guy we didn't see a whole lot of today, another maybe portal entry guy, Marcus Strong. Did we see a lot of him today? Not that I He remember. was out there quite a bit that I saw, but he didn't make a big splash or anything. Two tackles, it says here. Ashton Sanders also two tackles, but um, I do think that there's a chance if they get two defensive... Let's say they get two defensive linemen in the portal, I wouldn't be shocked if one of those guys ended up entering and la- leaving. I mean, at some point, they're going to have to get the numbers down. It's, right. it's, it's literally a numbers game. So 
there are going to be a couple guys that end up entering the portal, and it's just going to be interesting to see who those guys are. Wouldn't you say on Monday? I mean, and it's so I think we could interesting we could have, how it happens now because coaches don't necessarily have to cut players. The collective can just go to the players and say, "Hey, we're not renewing you for next year." Yeah. I mean, it's it's like it's kind of like uh, office space. It's like we'll just fix the glitch. What do you do here? What would explain to me what you do here, Michael? <laughs> so it's a good problem to have. But I, I would imagine this next week, if there are guys that they feel like cannot help them, they're gonna if they yeah. haven't already, they're gonna go to them. They'll have those. Uh, you know, exit I, I don't interviews. know if they do like an actual spring football exit interview, mm-hmm. but it'll be something of the like. Well, and maybe it's one of those deals where, um, you know. Curtis Lofton and the new guy they brought in from Kansas State have been kind of going. It's almost like you have, if you're in the NFL, like we've all watched Hard Knocks, like you have meetings about, okay, this is our board. This is who's on it. Who do we like, you know, and who do we, who do we think and, just isn't going to be able to help us? And some of it probably depends on if they can land some of these guys in the, in the transfer portal. Like if, they, if you land just one defensive lineman, then maybe you don't have to sit it's there. It's a different decision making process. Right. So it's, it's, it's all of those things, but I do think you'll see some guys enter, and you know there'll always be a surprise or two. I think some people were surprised by Harrington, and and I was a little bit. But when you think about it, it's like, yeah, the guy probably wasn't going to play a whole lot, and he's coming off two ACL injuries. It's like I think it just kind of confirms what we've heard all spring too, right? Which was almost kind of like as sad as I am to see him go, because I do like Justin Harrington. It kind of confirmed to us kind of what we said at the top was these other guys have been really good. And maybe there wasn't going to be a spot for him. I, I think the one that would maybe surprise some people is is Barnes. Like that could be the one that's like, oh, that's surprising. But then again, you, you talk about it's just you a bit try of and weird. Read the tea leaves. It's, right. It's yeah. like it's not that surprising. Right. What's weird to me is if he is if he enters the portal, I'll go, oh, okay. Yeah. If he doesn't, though, then it's like a five more months of what the hell's going on with Javante Barnes? Why is he not playing in games? Why? Why does? Uh, he never get an opportunity when the lights are on. And, and you know, I if he left, I still feel pretty good about that running back room because I like Saw Chuck a lot. Sure. I think I think Caleb Hicks is a, is a good football. He can be a good football player. S- Sam Franklin's nice. And then you bring in Taylor Tatum this summer. But you wonder if you wonder if they they would look around at in the portal see if this, there's somebody you just take a flyer on if Barnes were to enter because you'd like to have really a good five running backs probably i just cannot believe that oh you would not be honest with javante barnes like i think that they and yeah i i don't know if they aren't yeah i mean it's just like Maybe. we're sitting here trying to figure out like what the hell is happening like but my gut tells me like they're they're all on the same page and they i have will to be. i will say like in the video that i showed you carrie like mm-hmm. i have a couple other shots of him on the sidelines from today and at no point did it seem like he was mad. It didn't seem like he was angry. It didn't seem like he was confused by what was going on. So maybe they did tell him before, hey, we're not we're not going to play you today. Mm-hmm. Maybe he was okay with that. It's just, it's it's very to, uh, I guess, use just that uh, he was dressed out. I mean, that yeah. he just doesn't ever have a role. Because, I mean, Billy Bowman wasn't dressed out. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense. guys weren't dressed yeah. out. No, there, but, there were but, a lot of guys that didn't play in the game that weren't dressed. Like he didn't need to be dressed out. Right. But a lot of those guys didn't practice in the spring. And the sure. only one the only one that was like That's a that's a fair D, point. DJ Terry's the only other one that I was like, but that one makes sense because if you're Oklahoma, you say DJ Terry's our only guy that has any experience. We cannot afford to lose him in the scrimmage. Well, like, I, I was like I'm, you know, as we were all kind of talking about it, like why would Danny Stutzman play in this game today? Like when he only played I think yeah. what like one possession right. maybe. But you're right. Like it's it's. But he was a team captain, and it was a whole. Yeah. But uh, awesome custom jersey after the game. That was the incredible. Yeah. incredible. Jimmy Green Beans. I guess Did he Jared, say where he got that? He they I think fanatics or something. He yeah. ordered it. I'm wondering if he pulled an Eddie there, calling it Selena, Kansas. Oh, I'm sure. He's taking after you, just mispronouncing things just randomly. Shout out Selena, Kansas. We'll shout. We'll give him a shout out. I think Kanick has a uh, James Skalski Clemson jersey too. Does he really? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, what he, that's what uh, Danny said. That's what they ordered. You gotta together. keep Kanick around just for the vibes. He's a good vibes guy, and I still think he has potential. I just, it's just, 
He's getting passed up. But and then every once in a while he'll make a play where you're like, oh, there it is. It's you like know? there the light was on there. Yeah. He yeah. was the second leading tackler today. Sure. sure. Now a lot of that was because he was probably playing in the late third, fourth quarter. Oh, and I just love I just love there. Kip Lewis and, and Lewis Lewis Carter a lot yeah. more. Like those two well, look, guys are just they're fun. We can talk players, about them. Man. I think the guy that stood out today more than anybody was Kobe McKenzie. Kobe just McKenzie, in, just Kobe in McKenzie, terms of being in the right, he place just every the right time, time he gets in, he just does things right. Sure. Like you said, Kerry, he's he's just always in the right place. It seems. I thought Kenai Walker had a really good day. Can Maybe I Walker? that was just because he had a couple of pass breakups, and I was like, oh, okay, there he is. But yeah. I thought he was really good. Yeah, there's a lot to like from today. I mean, no, I there's think, a ton of like. Oh, and you that's won. why I, I said told that, you guys, oh, you would win. <laughs> yeah. I like the uh, George. I like the. Uh, DJ call it uh, GIF after the game. You played yourself. You played yourself. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, look, like I said, I think this was one of the most entertaining spring games that I've seen. The ever. first half. The ever. first half was. Second but yeah, half. but you expect, I mean, the second half even went fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I looked up at one point in the fourth quarter and the clock was running during a timeout. I was like, okay, we made it. <laughs> we're, we made it. We we're, made it. We're, 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 we're going to make it. No, but I mean, the the amount of big plays, you just don't normally see that because defensive offense they've seen each other they know what each other do do you think that that we saw a bunch of like big plays uh especially in the air today because for the first time in what felt like forever it wasn't blowing 35 miles an hour like the pass game could actually yeah. be a pass game yeah yeah but i think jackson's just a really good deep ball thrower yeah, he, too he, he, he is well. and he I, well. I thought jackson you know for all that's been made about is he gonna turn the ball over too much I didn't think he had a whole lot of dangerous passes today. No. I think there was a couple times he held on the ball a little long, which ended in sacks. But other than that, like, I thought he was pretty pretty good. Yeah. Like, he went well, through his maybe, progressions. Maybe that's part of the offense being vanilla, too. It is. And, and I think, you know, a lot part of, of success. Part of the defense being vanilla, too. Yeah. He's not under a whole lot. Right. They're, They're not, not they weren't in, blitzing. Yeah, they yeah, weren't blitzing a ton. But it also helps, too, when Deion Burks is just a step faster than everybody. Like, it felt like he was just wide open that the was entire my, day. That was what probably the biggest takeaway is that Deion Burks is going to be a difference maker. Like, I and against really good, fast players. What's, uh, what's well, your, the thing is, like, you remember when he first came and I was like, what? Could he be like a Zay Flowers type? Uh, and Josh was like, "Oh, he doesn't have that speed, but it's similar. He might have that." He was fast. Speed. What's his over under uh, yards next year? Oh God, let's not but, do this after a spring game. We, I'm gonna do we it. We spent the entirety of the, the leading up saying, "Don't make too big of a deal out." Drake what Stoops. To the Drake game. Stoops last year had 892 yards receiving over under that for Dion. Oh, led, and led the Big Twelve, right? Yep. I mean, I would say that it's probably somewhere there or north of there. Yeah. Because I think they are going to use him quite a bit. But here's the thing. I think you have more wide receivers to throw the ball to. Throw the ball around to. So th that those numbers are going to probably be spread out a little bit, I would think. Yeah. I, think I would say under what Drake did a year ago, but he's more in a bigger impact. Would that be fair? Like a home run, home right. run type right. hitter. I'm yeah. saying over just because... He's going to have a lot of like that they have. touchdown passes. Can he get the 1,000? I, I think so, because with the bodies that they have going into the season, he's going to be Jackson Arnold's favorite target. If Andrell Anthony is not healthy, and he hasn't had time with Andrell Anthony on the practice I still, field. I still think that we forget how good Nick Anderson was a year ago. That's like, true. Could he That's be true. the number one guy? He's got to stay healthy. I need, I, need, I need Nick Anderson to stay healthy. And Mar that matter, Marvin I, Mims had 1,000 yards in... Uh, in 2022. I don't know, I'll say this. It's I don't think be I'm done easier. with Jalil Farouk either. No. It's going to be easier to bracket Nick Anderson than it is Deion Burks because you can move Deion all over the place. Yeah. And if Deion Burks has a really good month of September, all of a sudden it's going to be more open for a Nick Anderson or a Jaden Gibson or whoever. Yeah. God, they just need to protect Jackson Arnold. They got a chance to, to have a pretty explosive offense, I think. Which I did not think until today. I mean, I think that's what... OU fans have to come away today feeling the best about it. It's like, holy shit, we have a chance to have an explosive offense. I don't think anybody saw that coming just from watching a scrimmage. Well, today. I just didn't. I knew Deion Burks was good. I didn't realize he had some of the breakaway speed that he does. Like, he just ran away from Kenai Walker on that first touchdown. Like, he was catching up to him. He's like, oh, shit, I'm behind you. I'm time for me to put you in the dust. Yeah. Like, I, I think he has some just elite, elite quickness. Yeah. He was good. There's a lot of Looking positives. Looking forward to it. A lot of positives from today. 
Uh, National champions. Well, at least for today, they might be. <laughs> They're ranked number one in the state of Oklahoma. Now we can shift all of our focus to the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's right. The only disappointing right. part of this pod is that the beer had gone bad in the refrigerator, so Eddie wasn't slurring a little bit. I should have I got some before I came over here, but that's okay. Plenty of time to go get some now. All right. Uh, that is going to do it uh, for the Eskridge Lexus post game podcast. Don't forget EskridgeLexus.com. Get in line for those GX 550s if you've been checking out the YouTube videos on them. Pretty damn cool SUVs coming out. Uh, and so we thank you all for listening. Glad you guys uh, got to enjoy a nice spring game today. Uh, we'll be back. Lots of stuff on YouTube. By the way, Eddie, I predicted we'd be at uh, 14,950 during the spring game. Go see what we're at right now. I think we might even be above. We were at we were at fourteen nine fifty when I came in here. It still just says fourteen nine, but I would imagine with all the stuff that we put up here over the last hour and a half that we'll uh, get there by uh, tomorrow morning. And this will be up on the YouTube page, just the audio only. Sure. Um, but this will be up on the YouTube page. But all our regular podcasting platforms, Spotify, iTunes, uh, Go- uh, YouTube Music now, since Google Podcasts are, are no more. Uh, so go check it out uh, on YouTube if you want. Subscribe. Uh, help us get to 15,000. like to do that uh, by the time the weekend is over, if we can. I think we can do that. Uh, so thanks for listening. We'll be back again uh, when the regular season hits, when OU joins the SEC. By the way, big July 1st celebration being promoted after the game today. Uh, sounds like they're going to really do it up at a lot of different locations and parties well, and things like that. Yeah, uh, Feinbaum, Feinbaum said Baum that he's here? coming here July 1. Okay. He's going to do a show from here. He was I, at I don't the, know what like that entails. He was but... at the softball game last night. Yeah. With yeah. the, the boss, yeah. apparently. Yeah. So that'll be great. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so looking forward to it. We'll be back again on YouTube uh, throughout next week. Uh, and uh, recruiting gets ready to get, get underway. We're going to give that our full focus here coming quickly. Summer, summer camp's coming up, so all that good stuff. Stay tuned with us at Soonerscoop.com, uh, and uh, we'll see you next time, next season, in the SEC with the first SEC Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast coming up. Thanks for listening. We'll see you then.